Welcome back to Fry Minis. I'm Eric, and today in our Monsters of the Multiverse coverage, we are talking Fire Genasi. All right. So we were three. This is our third video out of four for the Genasi. And I'm starting to wonder if we're getting flexible with our creature type. So like with so many fey, why can't we have elemental? Just because you'll get banished <laughs> and be done. Um, I don't know. I really like the dual type wizards was trying out where, you, where you've got two different types. Like we could have humanoid and elemental here. I think that could be fun. I, I think it's, I think it would have been nice if these weren't just humanoid. Just like, and as y'all repeatedly pointed out in the comments on the, um, on the Aladrin, like, why aren't they Fae? <laughs> if, like, like uh, we talk, oh, oh, they're, they're the Fae wild elf. They're the Fae, 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 Fae. You are humanoid. Okay. From my impression before this book, Fire Genasi were probably the most popular Genasi. Uh, they had dark vision they had the cool fire cantrip. They had some, they had some, a pretty good loadout. I would often see, uh, the fire Genasi set as the example of what the Genasi should be. So, okay. Um, let's, let's see how they hold up. So first again, here's our Genasi lore. Tracing their ancestry to the genies of the elemental planes, each Genasi can tap into the powers of one of the elements, air, earth, fire, and water. These are the four pillars of the material plane and the four types of Genasi. Some Genasi are direct descendants of a genie, while others are born to non-Genasi parents who live near a place suffused by genie's magic. A typical genie has a lifespan of 120 years. I want you to listen to that. I'm trying to save time on these videos. <laughs> I'm, I'm running out of breath trying to burn through these things as quick as I can for you. Okay, Fire Genasi lore. Descendant from Ifrit, the genies of the elemental plane of fire, Fire Genasi channel the flamboyant and often destructive nature of flame. They show their heritage in their skin tones, which can range from deep charcoal to shades of red and orange. Some bear skin tones common to humanity, but with fiery marks, such as a slowly swirling light under their skin that resembles ember or glowing red lines tracing over their bodies like cracks. Fire Genasi hair can resemble threads of fire or sooty smoke. Charcoal briquette people. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think it's great. Every single one of these, all for Genasi super cool descriptors. And if you've been watching these videos, you know what I'm going to say next. We have our standard race template, plus two and plus one or three plus ones for our stats, common and another language. We're now living 120 years. We're about the size of a human in real life. Um, all the normal stuff. Okay. Fire Genasi traits. You are humanoid. You are medium or small. You have a walking speed of 30 feet. You have dark vision out to 60 feet. All right, normal stuff. Uh, one just minor thing of note here that I think some people won't love and I don't love either. Uh, it, it has just the normal dark vision, the shades of gray. <laughs> Before you could see in shades of red. And I think that was like a fun thing. Just this minor little flavor thing that's not gonna really change anything. Um, I, just, I just like the little bit of flavor variety here, or that was here. So it's not the end of the world. And I'm sure if you ask your dungeon master or if they'll say yes, or if you're one of your players asks you if they can see in red instead of gray when it's dark, just say, yeah, just go for it. It's still like monochromatic. So you're still losing out on a bunch of, I don't know. It's just, 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 just give us the flavor. Fire resistance. You have resistance to fire damage. So of course, yeah, great. We get that. Um, I do think. And I, I mean, I don't know, but I, I feel like most generally, generally most races will have like power budget. I know there are a bunch of websites and tools out there where you can like, uh, assign point values to different racial features and see how overpowered or underpowered a race is based on that kind of budget. And I, well, I don't know that it's <laughs> as, uh, mathematical as those sites are. Uh, I do feel that there probably is some sort of a, of a rough feel for power and i think based on this and then all the other <laughs> exciting traits you're going to get with this race um i think the 
fire resistance is eating a lot out of that budget uh because all the other races you've got all these other cool things you you have your your resistance you've got maybe like a feature or two like the um earth genasi being able to move through difficult terrain stuff like that uh here we have fire resistance and then we have our spells that everybody else has <laughs> and that's it <laughs> that's it um so okay uh We'll, we'll talk more about that at the end, but in the meantime, let's finish this out with uh, Reach to the Blaze. You know the Produce Flame Cantrip. Starting at third level, you can cast Burning Hand spell with this trait, and starting at fifth level, you can also cast the Flame Blade spell with this trait without requiring material component. Once you cast Burning Hands or Flame Blade with this trait, you can't cast that spell with it again until you finish a long rest. You can also cast it with any spell slots. Uh, and you can choose Intelligence, Wisdom, or Charisma for it. So Produce Flame is cool. It's a good utility cantrip. I mean, you've got some damage on there too, but you've got the light. Like, you could definitely start fires with it, that kind of thing, right? I mean, come on. And then you've got Burning Hands. Okay, that's a cool spell. Uh, I hope... <laughs> I hope you get more... You have spell slots, and I hope you are a caster because otherwise your DC is not going to be great and your 3d6 as high as it's going to scale if you don't have spell slots is not going to be great. Flame blade is cool, that's interesting. But I don't know, these spells they fit with the destructive fire kind of thing. And I like that we have an AoE and I like that we have a bip, 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 bip kind of thing and a cantrip solid. It's just this is a kind of a one note. I don't know <laughs> without getting that extra like utility kind of kind of fun feature that all the others have. There's just like a weirdness here. And that's it. That, <laughs> that's fire Genasi. So I think we went from being the best Genasi to the worst Genasi, but not bad. It's still it's still not bad. It's just not. I just don't think it holds up to the others. I don't know this one like the flavor of looking like the fire genasi, of maybe looking like a elemental made of cracking and drawing magma. I think it's so cool, yeah, of course. But the actual mechanics here, I don't think hold up to the others. And I don't know, I'm not gonna waste any more time. Tell me what you think, fire genasi, hot or not? Okay, check us out, frymenus.com. See you later. In the earth genasi video, I forgot to include the character artwork so here you go.